down with sorrow, shunned on every hand. We're looking for a city built above. Oh, yes, we look for a city where we'll never die. There, the sainted millions, oh, they never say goodbye. Appreciate the pastor, and hopefully he'll be back here soon, sooner than later. And uh, it humbles me that I'm here tonight, and uh, I feel the responsibility of being here tonight. And uh, always, I don't know how, I mean, I don't know how some of you other preachers are, but I still have a little case of nerves usually about this time. And uh, because of the responsibility and wanting to say what the Lord would have me to say, the way He wants me to say it. And uh, so, uh, we're going to turn to Psalm 116 tonight, Psalm 116, and we're going to begin with verse 1, and uh, And 
I'm used to preaching to captive audiences, so uh, <laughs> Brother Vinny, don't let anybody leave. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just kidding about that. But anyway, Psalm 116, verse 1 says, I love the Lord because He hath heard my voice and my supplications, because He hath inclined His ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death can pass me, and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. And gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. And let's pray here just a moment. Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Just ask, Lord, that you would bless your word. And, Lord, you'd uh, just accomplish your purpose here tonight in each heart. And Lord, work there and as only you can, Lord. I know that no man can minister to the heart. No man can really speak to the heart, but I know that you can through us. And Lord, I ask that you would do that tonight and, and just work here and accomplish your purpose and just bless the word as it goes forth. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to look there at uh, verse 7 kind of for the thought of the message and, and verse 7 says return into thy rest O my soul and I want to kind of look at that as being the thought of the message tonight return into thy rest and uh, we under you know, as we look at life we understand tonight or as we live life you know, we go through some different periods don't we and I think the psalmist here in these verses that we read, you know, he speaks of some different things that he has experienced in life. And we understand again tonight that all, the, all experiences in life are not necessarily pleasant. And, and sometimes we struggle through those times. And sometimes it's easy to get out of focus during those times. And there's various reasons why sometimes that we lose focus of the Lord and, and of the rest that He provides. We, we lose focus. Sometimes it can just be the things that we have to do. You know, we just, we get busy in the work that we have to do. And sometimes we get just sidetracked enough that we lose focus of the Lord. I mean, sometimes we got so much to do and we just focus on the work and, and we need to first focus on the Lord. Um, sometimes the task that's assigned to us, you know, they, they, you know there are many and, and sometimes it, they're time consuming and sometimes it's just easy to lose focus. Sometimes it's not just the work that we have to do, but it's the circumstances that we see. Or there's, you know, sometimes the circumstances of life, you know, they kind of weigh us down. And if we're not careful, we look at the circumstances instead of the Lord. Yeah. I read this, so I think I read this in a, I don't know if it was in a John R. Rice sermon or in a book that he wrote, but he said one time a man, he asked a man how he was doing. And the man said, well, I'm doing pretty good under the circumstances. And and John O'Reilly seemed like was pretty blunt. I never knew him. He died before I got around Independent Baptist. But I think he always looked over his glasses like this and he said, well, what are you doing down there? <laughs> but it's easy to, to be under the circumstances, isn't it? And sometimes we lose focus because of the circumstances. You know, Peter was doing pretty good walking on the water until he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to look at the wind and the waves and then he got afraid. Um, he became afraid in that moment. 
And then also, there's another reason why, and, I, and I'm not saying these are the only reason, but there's another reason why sometimes the people of God lose focus, and that's because we have an enemy. Yes, and man, does he ever fight us at times. And he's the master at sowing doubt in our heart. And, and causing us sometimes maybe to question God just a little. You ever been there? I'd say most of us have been. You know, and and you know, he causes us to doubt God, and he, and he gets our focus off of him. And so there's different reasons why sometimes we lose focus in life. We lose focus of the Lord, of who he is, and, and of the rest that he provides. And I'll say to you tonight, we, we need Him, don't we? We need Him all the time. We need that rest that He provides. And I think the psalmist here, you know, he realized there had been a separation there in his life. There was some separation between him and the Lord. And so he says here in verse 7, you know, he, he makes a decision, does he, doesn't he? He says, return unto the rest Turn into thy rest, O my soul. Yeah. Now, I want you to think about this with me tonight for a few moments. I'll say this, only the Lord Jesus tonight can provide rest for the soul. Right. You know, we're kind of a complicated being, and I haven't got my mind wrapped around it, but I know we're a trinity, aren't we? We're body, soul, and spirit according to the Word of God. And, and that soul, that comes from God, doesn't it? And only He can take care of the soul. I mean, we hear a lot about the different things that people experience, and, you know, most of the time they're just classified as physical. We hear a lot about anxiety and depression, and, and a medical doctor, he's just going to say it's physical. But I don't want that. No medical doctor can give rest to the soul. No, no pill can give rest to the soul. Only Jesus can do that. Would you agree with that statement tonight? Only Jesus can give rest to the soul. Only He can minister to the soul. And I don't want that. You got rest in your soul. That kind of helps you cope, doesn't it? I mean. And I'll say this, this is, this, is, this is a kind of a side note. He's the only one also that can restore the soul. We as the people of God, we need Him. And we need His rest. And when we find ourselves separated from Him for whatever the reason might be, it's time to make the same determination here as the psalmist and say, I'm going to return unto my rest. I'm going to return to Him. Yeah. Because quite frankly, we can't deal with life on our own, can we? We can't handle the different problems and aspects of it. We need the Lord every step of the way. We need Him de desperately, don't we? And as, as we look at this tonight, uh, notice uh, that first of all, the writer of the Psalms, it doesn't say who wrote it, but the writer of the Psalms, he first of all, as he is he comes to this point, he looks back. He looks back to what the Lord's already done for him. And he says this in verse 7, For the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. He looks back here. And, and I'll say any time we find ourselves kind of separated from the Lord, we need to just kind of look back for a moment and yes. consider what He's already done. Yes, Would you agree with the psalmist tonight that He's dealt bountifully with each one of us? Amen. Would you agree with that statement tonight that God's been good to us? Amen. And He's given us far more than we deserve. Right. I mean, I look at my life tonight and I consider who I am and, and, and I wonder why He cares so much for me. I wonder why He's so concerned about me. I mean, I'm just a, a kind of a little nobody from the middle of nowhere. And yet he's dealt so bountifully with me. I mean, I, I've given him reason just to turn his back on me. I don't know if you ever did that or not, but I've, I mean, I, 
yet he cares about me and he's been so good to me and he's dealt bountifully with me in life. He says there in verse 8, For thou hast delivered my soul from death. He's saying there, you know, Lord, you're my salvation. You've delivered my soul from death. Now, I look at that, you know, when, when you look at death, you know, in the Bible, there's the, there's the physical death, but also there's spiritual death. And, and that's the state we're in before we get saved. We're dead spiritually, aren't we? We're alienated from God because of our sin. But here he says, Thou hast delivered, thou hast delivered my soul from death. Now, we were separated from God. We were under the dominion of sin. We were, we were destitute of grace. We were destitute of that divine life that we now possess as a believer in Christ. We was dead spiritually. Now, Adam and Eve didn't die physically the day they took, partook of the fruit, did they? But they died spiritually. <laughs> And you and I that's been truly saved, we know what that spiritual death is, don't we? Man, what a difference Jesus made when He imparted to us spiritual life. What a blessing to be saved tonight. And that came as a result of what God did. I mean, He imparted to us spiritual life. What a blessing. And so, you and I that are saved, we're no more spiritually dead. And also, we understand as a New Testament Christian, He has also saved us from eternal death. We'll never die that death, will we? We'll never experience the second death. We've been saved from that. And I mean, we look at the Lord. I mean, He's the one that has delivered our soul from death. Uh, don't you think we need Him, though, for everything else? <laughs> and, if, and if He did that for us, like Romans said, you know, if He, uh, if he give His Son for us, how much more shall He freely with Him give us all things? Yeah. Um, he, he's the one that has saved us and delivered us from death. He's our Savior, our salvation. Also, the psalmist says, He's delivered my mine eyes from tears. He's saying in that statement, you know, the Lord's not only my salvation, He's my comfort. What a comforter He is. You know, you and I, well, there's been times when He alone provided the comfort that we needed. You know, tears are excited by grief and sorrow. I mean, you can have tears of joy. I think we've all had a few of them too, but most of the time we associate tears with grief. And, and the psalmist is saying, oh, there's been times in my life when, when you saved my eyes from tears and you just comforted me and, and got me through that time of grief. And I'll say this, there's no comforter like Him. And you and I that are saved, we have Him in us, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You and I on this side of Calvary, we're even more blessed than they were on that side. <laughs> we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Comfort within us. And He has comforted us in our times of grief. And He's helped us to go on in life. And He, and he, and he continually helps us. He's... He's delivered our eyes from tears. And then he says, My feet from falling. I look at this, he's saying, Well, the Lord's my guide. Yeah. He helps me not to stumble. He leads me in a good path. He, you know, he helps me, uh, he gives me direction. Also, he's saying, He's my stability. He supports me, He helps me to not fall. I don't know about you, I fell a few times naturally. And 
seem like as I'm getting a little older, the ground's harder than it used to be. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. I'm a little slow, but I'm working on it. <laughs> But, you know, he, he, he helps us to be stable. He, he keeps us from falling spiritually. He's our stability. He's our strength. He keeps our feet from falling. I look at this, you know, and boy, Jesus is a lot of things to us. He's done a lot of things for us. You know, when you find yourself separated from Him, you just need to remind yourself of what He's done for you. Right. Yeah. And, and then you just need to make a resolve. You know, you first remember, and then you make a resolve. You know, I'm going to return to my rest. I, I'm going to go back to my rest. You know, that word return means that's the act of going back. You know, like I said, sometimes we find ourselves separated from the Lord. And, you know, sometimes it's not intentional. I kind of give some reasons why sometimes we lose focus. It's not intentional sometimes. Sometimes it might be. But when we figure out we're away from the Lord and we're not really enjoying His rest, it's just time to say, Lord, uh, I'm going to come back. Lord, I want, I want back close to you again. Lord, I, I need your rest today. I've got more on, on my plate than I can do. Yeah. Lord, I just need your rest. Lord, the circumstances in my life, you know, they're greater than I am. Lord, I just need your rest. Oh, Lord, the enemy's attacking and he's causing me to doubt. Lord, I just need you. I just need your rest today. I want to come back to you and I just want to find rest for my soul. So we've got to have that resolve. I like the way he says this, return unto thy rest. And the Lord's provided rest for His people. First of all, the matter of salvation, we, we are in a state of reconciliation. Aren't you glad for that rest? Yes. But then also He provides Another type of rest, and that's a quiet rest where you can just be free from motion or disturbance. Where in Him you can just find that peace that you need, that rest that you need. And, 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 and you can, and, and, and in that tonight, you know, your soul is ministered to. You no, know, we need that, don't we? Man, I want to remind you, Jesus is the great physician, especially of the soul. Isn't He? He's the great physician of the soul. Like the old song says, He, he heals us of all of our soul's diseases. When you find yourself in that difficult place and you find yourself separated from Him just a little, just return to Him. Go back to Him and just allow Him to, like Isaiah says, His rest is glorious. His rest is wonderful. Make that resolve to return to the Lord. I want to remind you here just for a few moments, and I'll be done, but I want to remind you here for a few moments what Jesus said there in Matthew 11. And, you know, you know we call that the great invitation, or a lot of men do. And Jesus says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. That word labor means you're tolling and you're burdened. Come unto me, all ye that labor. I'll, I'll say this all of us know what burdens are, don't we? You know, sometimes they seem so heavy. And, and then he speaks of the heavy laden here, that speaks of being oppressed. 
and I'll say this, I mentioned our enemy a while ago, but I'll mention he's the master at oppressing people. <laughs> Acts 10, Peter said this about Jesus, he came to heal all that were oppressed of the devil. <laughs> I think he's working overtime in that department today. Yeah. And the people of God, we just need to we need to stay close to Jesus and come back to Him if we're separated from Him. Just come back and let Him take care of that. Just let Him give us rest in in, in that in that time of oppression. Yes. I know one thing: you and I can't handle the enemy on our own, can we? But Jesus can take care of that, and He can heal us from that oppression. Jesus said, Come unto me. He's the answer, He's the source of rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor. I mean, if you're, if you're laboring and you're heavy burdened tonight, Jesus just says, Come unto me. And I mean, we, we preach this to, to sinners, don't we? And it's a good invitation for the lost to come to Jesus. But I want to remind you, sometimes we as a saved needs to come unto Him too for that rest that He provides. Because sometimes we can be burdened too. We don't have a sin burden if we're saved, but we can be burdened with other things, can't we? In fact, I don't know about you, I got a lot of favorite passages in the Word of God. It took me for years to come up with a live verse. I finally did, but, but I'll say this. These verses here in Matthew are some of my favorite words that Jesus spoke. He said, I will give you rest. Notice I love the way it's, He states that, I will. You know what? When Jesus says, I will, He will. <laughs> End of discussion. <laughs> Don't have to worry about it. If Jesus said, I will, He will. He also said, I will come again. He said it, He will. <laughs> I will give you rest. No. And He says, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. You know, Jesus has a yoke. He, he wants us to take it upon Him. You know, it speaks of service, doesn't it? But then I also like looking at it this way. You know, I never was around oxen. Not, not, not oxen you work anyway. I've been around beef all my life. Been around it where it's raised, and it sure tastes good. You, you, you corn feed a beef for about six months, and I'll take that over grass-fed beef any day. <laughs> you know, someone said, you know, you'll live a little longer if you eat grass-fed. I'd just soon live a little shorter. <laughs> <clears throat> How to get off on that? <laughs> Ox. I'll get back to my point here in a minute. <laughs> but I was around workhorses. Neighbors had Belgian draft horses. That was impressive. Dad had horses and mules that he logged with. I just missed out on that golden opportunity. You know, I never did have to learn how to skid logs with a horse or a mule. I'm, 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 sometimes, you know, you could have good ones and you could have mean ones. I know one thing, none of them liked yellow jackets, so. <laughs> And anyway, that's another story. But anyway, uh, Jesus, you know, this yoke, it connects, basically, it connects two oxen for drawing. And uh, I, I kind of, I heard Earl Hughes speak of this one time. I kind of look at it this way, you know, when, when you take his yoke upon you, actually you're in the yoke with Jesus. Yeah. No wonder we can find rest there, Brother Danny. Yes, sir. Man, you, you, we're in the yoke with Him. Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, I may be weak, but He's strong. Yeah. I may be little, but He's mighty. Yeah. I may be helpless, but He's never been. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 
Get in the yoke with Jesus. Just take his yoke upon you. You, know, you got to receive it. You got to, got to be willing to receive it. Take my yoke upon me. And he says, learn of me. Just learn from him. He'll give you knowledge that will help you rest. He'll give you instruction that will help you rest. And he'll just give you an example, you know. He says even here, for I'm meek and lowly. He'll say to you, you know, just, if you want my rest, just submit to me. Just submit. I know where you're at. I know what you're going through. Just submit to me. I'll, I'll give you rest. You'll find rest unto your souls. Just submit to me. Just yield to me and let me work it all out. Oh, Jesus was the picture of lowliness, wasn't He, when He was here. He was free from pride. Now, when we get in that yoke with Jesus, we find rest. His yoke's easy. It's not heavy. It's not burdensome. His burden's light. And we find rest in that yoke. We can find rest right in the midst of service when we're in the yoke with Him. Right. When we're in that right relationship with Him, we find rest. When we're depending upon Him, we find rest. I remember over the years, I, I had to learn this the hard way. You know, there'd be times even in the ministry, I'd get kind of down. What it was, I was focusing more on the ministry than I was on Him. You know what? You get out of the yoke, even serving the Lord, you'll get frustrated. I mean, even trying to serve Him, you'll get just frustrated. Yeah. Boy, when you're in the yoke with Him, the same problems you still find rest in the midst of them. I mean, this is for every one of us that's saved. I just encourage you, if you're away from the Lord, even just a little, just return unto Him tonight and enjoy His full rest. Yo. Yeah. Brother Earl Hughes said in that same message, he said, you know, when you're in the yoke with Jesus, he said you can't help but bump up against Him every once in a while. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to say, you know, you and I that are saved, the best place we can be is as close as we possibly can be to Him. Yeah. And it, it, it takes effort and takes discipline and determination to stay there because there's a lot of things that tries to get us out of focus. But I want to say to you, just return unto your rest tonight. Yeah. If you're there tonight, just stay there if you can. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. He is our rest. He is our comfort. He is our restorer. And He's the only one that can make some days worth living. Right. Yeah. Amen.